Hi guys, my name is Alyssa and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about draconic astrology. Now, this is really exciting for people because they're all like, I have so many questions about draconic astrology and they're like, Alyssa, simplify it for me. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, sometimes it takes a long time for me to actually simplify something because I haven't really fully grasped it yet. And even in Draconic Astrology, there's a lot that I haven't fully grasped about it. But thanks to my dear friend Bronwyn, I have been able to master a little bit of it over the past couple of years. Um, and I say master, I use master very loosely. But I just want to give you a little bit of tips and tricks to actually understand Draconic. So the first thing I want to tell you is that you can get a Draconic chart on some websites. I know that astro.com actually gives you one. You just have to go in the drop down menu, go all the way to the bottom of the list and you can get a draconic chart. There are two different kinds. There's the draconic chart and then there's a comparison draconic and natal chart. Both of them are very interesting and I will explain why. You might want to understand what exactly draconic astrology is. They say it's true self astrology or soul astrology, maybe your true spirit astrology. There are two ways you can look at it. You can take the reincarnation approach or you can take the born once into this world with one thing on your mind and having your parents destroy it approach. What do I mean by that? Technically, when you were born, you carried on this spiritual self. You were of a spiritual being that just had to enter this body. And when you entered it, you were what your draconic chart says you were. When your parents raised you, they changed things. They, they took what you were and they forced their own opinion down your throat, which in general then shaped who you are. And as you are a man, a woman, as an adult, you are the way of your natal chart. So when people look into the draconic astrology, they get all pissed off because they're like, what? I'm not an Aries moon. I have a Taurus moon. I don't even feel like an Aries moon. Well, maybe you don't because you've been a Taurus moon for so long. How do you even know what an Aries moon feels like? You don't. You don't fucking know. I know because I'm a Taurus moon and I have an Aries moon in draconic. What you need to take from this and what you need to feel is that this is who you really truly are. Not that your natal chart is not who you really truly are. If you can't grasp that, you don't need to even be looking into draconic astrology because you can't figure out that maybe you can actually be two different things. So where does draconic astrology come from as far as how do they calculate the chart? They take your normal natal chart and they find your north node. Now your north node is your destiny. Ish. And they drop it at zero degrees Aries. This doesn't change any of the houses or the planets in the houses. This only changes the signs. Now it moves everything. Here's your chart and here's your North node and it moves it to the Aries point. So everything is shifted so that the North node can be at the Aries point of zero degrees. So if you have an Aries North node, none of your chart really gets shifted all that much. And this is why. Here's your destiny, Aries North Node. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to learn who you are, find your true self. So here you are looking in the world for your true self, right? And guess what, Aries North Node people? The universe doesn't make it that hard to find it because you're really fucking close. Those who had an Aries North Node would have reacted differently to my IC MC videos mainly based on the IC. And that is because it wasn't necessarily that your parents gave you this IC or that the people around you gave you this IC. It was more of the fact that you were born with it and you made your parents react to it. Subconsciously, universally, whatever it was, you made your parents react to you in a certain way. I and my siblings have Gemini ICs. My sister, Clara, has a Sagittarius IC. She also has an Aries North node. We wonder all the time, how did she, through her parents who obviously raised us all the same, give her a different IC? And it was because she gave my parents no choice. Because she, her natural destiny was to find her true self. 
So now that we have that Aries North Node thing taken out of the way, not everybody has an Aries North Node. I have a Taurus North Node, so that moves it a little bit. You might have a Sagittarius North Node, which is going to move it a lot. And when that happens, this is going to be your true self. Why would I even care to know about my true self? Because it's kind of nice to know when you're a soul floating around in the world and you were born into a body like what you were supposed to be, what you were meant for. And if you take that, what you were meant for, and you kind of move it into what you have now, you can really develop a lot of information about yourself. You can actually see maybe like what your true purpose really is. Because I like using myself as an example, I have a Sagittarius Midheaven because my parents gave me a Gemini I see. So I would have had a Taurus I see. Naturally, instinctively, I would have been needing security. I felt like maybe I belonged to a different family, a family that could have given me wealth. <laughs> very Taurus -y type things, a lot of stability. I didn't have that. I had that Gemini. I wanted, I craved this Taurus ability. I believe that my mom saw that and gave me a Taurus moon because she knew that I needed stability. So my mom really tried that even though the instability of my Gemini IC family was around me, I got this Taurus moon because that's what I craved based on my Taurus IC. Now moving up to the MC, Gemini goes into Sagittarius. It feels like a lot of my true purpose is to expand my career and to be famous, but there's a lot of me that's super introverted and it always seems that a lot of negative aspects, a lot of negative energy and death follow me. I also feel like I really am interested in the craziest shit like a Scorpio Midheaven would be. I kind of speak my mind the way a Scorpio Midheaven would in this way that's like uniquely innately in me spiritually. Your moon in Draconic pretty much is the whole chart, let's say. Let's say that that moon is like your most important part because it is your soul passion and fire and whatever coming out of this Draconic chart that you're going to feel the most. Something very interesting that you can do once you find your moon sign is go back and watch one of my moon sign videos on that placement and see how much of that you feel like is your soul's desire and what you feel like is trying to... like come out of you in however it can you know that's what your moon is going to do that now your ascendant in draconic it is going to be my soul's mask and it's aquarius and so if i feel like that my whole entire chart then starts at the aquarius point moves all of the houses from the aquarius point the point where i desire and i want people to think of me is innovative and different and I want to challenge things with my Aquarius sun. Now you can also see that I have a Virgo sun sign in my draconic chart just like I do in Vedic astrology which is fantastic. I have this Virgo nature, spiritual nature, path, Virgo-y. I don't even want to talk about it. I have a Leo, Venus, and Mars. Because your Venus and Mars then, they're your romantic part of you. It's what you really desire. As you were a child, these are probably the things that you wanted in a partner. And as you grew older, your natal chart took control of you and changed your idea. So, me as an example, Virgo, Mars, and Venus. A little bit pessimistic about those things, but a little bit more logical about those things. But when I was a child, I fucking drew pictures of horses and knight in shining armor and drew my wedding dresses all the time and felt like I was never going to change myself for any man. They were going to come and love me and carry me off like fucking Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty was my favorite movie. Now I kind of watch Sleeping Beauty and it's not my favorite movie because it makes no fucking logical sense in my head. But that was there as a child. This... Leo shit fighting my love life now let's just say that we want to go to this comparison draconic natal comparison thing okay it's like a sinistry chart it's a sinistry chart if you know how to read that if you don't maybe don't touch it for right now until you learn how to kind of read what it has to say but you have your natal chart on the inside and your draconic chart on the outside 
and your draconic chart, it rotates. And now it's going to rotate these planets of the spiritual realm hitting the points on your natal chart. Conjunctions are really important because it's showing you that, say, you have your sun is in Virgo, say, and your Venus in your dachronic chart is in Virgo, and they conjunct. Your, that spiritual Venus is protecting your natal sun. Okay, and I know that I'm going to get so many questions about this, like, what is, does it mean when my Jupiter is conjuncting my IC and natal chart? I'm not going to, like, go into all those things. I really can't. There's so much, and that's stuff that, like, if you want to, you can purchase a reading from me on AlyssaSharp.com, and I will totally go over your whole draconic chart. I will totally tell you what each one of these objects mean. I will go into it. It costs $100 if it's worth that to you. If not, don't worry about that. You can watch my videos on my natal chart placements and learn through it yourself, which is ultimately what I want you to do, is I want you to be able to look at yourself and see who you truly are. If your draconic Jupiter is conjuncting something or it falls into one of your natal houses, imagine that the spiritual realm is expanding that house, is expanding that planet, is making it have a purpose, is making it important. Say Venus is there falling into a house or conjuncting something, it's protecting it with divine protection. Say your draconic moon falls into a house or conjuncts something, that draconic moon is adding that sort of soul passion and urge and motion and desire to that planet, to that house, is saying, this is what I want you to focus on, this is what I'm focusing on, this is what your soul is focusing on, now you focus on it. But before you try to just kind of dive into it, do one thing at a time. And so I encourage you, understand that it's your soul, it's your spirit self. It's not like this is like you now, because obviously you've changed, you've evolved. But imagine this is what your soul was before life changed you. And go back to the basics and look at it. And I do have some videos on these placements, so you can watch those, or you can watch anybody else's videos, or you can read about the signs in the natal chart and see how they relate to you. This is a lot of intuition, people. This is a lot of deep understanding of who you are, of trying to find your true self, which is why your north node falls on that Aries point, because it's finding your true self. It's allowing you to go in there and be like, this is, say, you lived your life. Your north node fell on your Aries point. You would be this way, so find this. That's what Draconic Astrology is about for right now, for the most part. There's obviously so much more deeper than that, but I just kind of wanted to give you an explanation that you could possibly understand and maybe dive a little bit deeper into. So anyway, I hope that was fun. I'll talk to you later. Bye.